Hello, people who watch my videos. Um, I guess some people feel like they're being talked down to um, when they watch all my stuff because it feels like I'm being touching them like a child. But the things that I'm talking about are very childish. That's why, and a lot of people don't speak English as their first language, and a lot of people don't know about this. So you're like a kid. When you first go to school and you learn about all these kind of things, you're kind of confused and you're like, what are all these things? Um, let me outline this. Okay, so there are different types of psychiatric medications called psychotropic drugs that a, that is that are available for prescription use. Can I get my tea? For different types of symptoms okay these drugs are used to treat the symptoms not the disorder in and of itself that part has to be aided with therapy or certain types of um it's not like a biological disorder like obesity where you have to treat it with lifestyle changes is how they describe it lifestyle changes being changes in diet changes in settings changes possibly in careers and jobs and fields um Change in interpersonal relationships, um, recognizing what is and isn't unhealthy. That kind of stuff is called a lifestyle change. Whereas um, these medications, like therapeutic techniques and all that kind of stuff for psychiatric disorders or psychiatric symptoms are for more towards to um, kind of prevent or at least manage these unhealthy blah 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 it's not really unhealthy but it's like abnormal um patterns of responses in someone's behavior thoughts and emotions so those are three distinct things so their behavior is not the same thing as just because somebody does something doesn't mean that's how they feel doesn't mean that that's how they think but it's separate from how they think how they feel and what they do those things are separate categories and they do trigger different areas in the brain. That's something a lot of people forget about that. When you are actively doing something, such as me right now, I'm talking and recording a video and I am sitting down, right? That Those things activate different parts of the brain and it lights up as it goes along. And you can see just from the pattern of the behavior from the brain or light up, lighting up scans of the brain what it is that I'm actually doing. The current research is actually targeted or directed towards how can we figure out what triggers what response? Because the fact that I'm awake and I'm doing a lot of things, somebody who's doing something completely different can show the exact same brain scan so they can't really pinpoint exactly what part of the brain lights up for which specific activity. Especially since you have to activate different parts of your brain because of speech, um, production of speech, th thought, um, awareness, consciousness, all that kind of stuff still lights up. When you're sleeping, your brain is still lighting up, right? Um, typically, it slows down. You can see it in the, like, if they have assessments for it, it's like a, it looks like a sine wave. Um, that's when you can kind of recognize when somebody's sleeping, when they're um, the activity, general um, excitation of the neuronal activity is slowed. That's when they're sleeping. <laughs> um, so, um, I maybe I should mention the stuff that I've been on. I don't remember all of it. Um, I'm gonna have to Google some to see if. Okay, so I know that um. One of the things that I was prescribed was called, was called clonopin, the brand name. There's generic, there's different brands for it. It's an anxiolytic. Um, it's called a benzodiazepine. It's under the class of drugs called benzodiazepines. And the generic name for it is called clonazepam. Um, uh, what is a point of... Somebody, people keep on stealing mine, to be honest. When he first prescribed it to me, I was taking it. I think he prescribed 0.25 milligrams twice a day. And then he's changed it to um, taking, for me, take 0.25, two pills at the end of the day before I sleep. 
before I would take one in the morning and take one at night, he asked me how I felt. He's like, um, do you feel tired and drowsy throughout the entire day? And I said, yes, I feel tired and drowsy throughout the day. So he says, okay, take two at night. And that's it. There are different um, strengths available. So there are one milligrams, there's 0.5 milligrams, and there's for different brands for clonazepam's. Um, so it was, clon it was called clonopin, that's what they prescribed me. Um, most commonly used one is called lorazepam. Um, there's this, I think it's called Ativan, that's the brand name for it. Ativan. Yeah, it's lorazepam, okay, so that's Ativan. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, Trazodone. So that was one of the stuff that I was prescribed. Um, you know, apparently, it's con technically considered an antidepressant. Again, he told me not to take too much of it. Um, there was... Um, so I'm, I was prescribed um, fluorazepam, but I didn't take it for too long. I didn't know the brand name was called Almain. Um, list of narcotics. <laughs> um, none of it was like Ambien, Motrin, or anything. It was because I had a hard time sleeping due to my anxiety symptoms. He actually did diagnose with me with generalized anxiety disorder. I don't think I'm qualified for that diagnosis anymore. But um, I did have really bad anxiety, which was the main reason why I went to see a psychiatrist. Um, again, even if you have those symptoms, they might actually just give you different medications for it. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, so it was diazepam, um, fluorazepam, uh, no, um, lorazepam. They never prescribed me out of it. Again, um, I think they're very weak. So the thing with Ativan is it's just as the side effects are just as the same as um, clonazepam, except the efficacy or the effects on that person is a lot weaker and they can take stronger doses for the same amount of time without experiencing potential side effects. Because if you took the same amount of clonazepam, you wouldn't be able to take it for that long period of time. That's kind of the... It's not... Unless you have really severe anxiety and you have severe symptoms of other disorders, it wouldn't be very advised for you to do that. Um, again, people kept like, taking my clonopin all the time. I don't know why people like to steal that kind of stuff. Um, not recommended. Um, apparently, people do like to abuse these types of prescription medication. It has a sedative effect, so it it's very calming and soothing. Um, num, 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 num. Uh, so I like I said, there's anxiolytics such as lorazepam, clonazepam, um, Xanax, and stuff like that. Um, that's typically used to treat different types of um, anxiety symptoms. So the racing thoughts and ability to stay still, um, anxiety being like this impending sense of dread, that kind of stuff. Um, I don't 
There's not a lot of. Okay, list of psychotropic drugs. Um, another thing they were prescribing, well, he was prescribing for me, was this medication called um. Start with a Q. They call Susie Q's or something on the street. God damn it, I forget. Um, still anti psychotics. Um, what does the um, anxiolytics do exactly? The point of these anxiolytics is to reduce. Okay. These symptoms like um that come from anxiety, right? Anxiety being um inability to focus and sit still and thinking things are going wrong all the time. So I'm gonna just Google anxiety disorder. So it's a mood disorder. Um, causes classification. Okay, so it's called generalized anxiety disorder, GAD. Okay, so it says, um, it's not, so first you gotta rule out everything else so that it's not due to medications, drugs, or other physical health problems. And it's not a panic disorder, and there's no other personality disorders. Not that they're in, they're comorbid with each other, personality disorders and um, mood disorders, but that doesn't mean that a person with a personality disorder has a mood disorder. <laughs> Apparently, according to the DSM, um, you have to have at least three of the following occur for an extended period of time. So he's talking about six months to a year you have been experiencing these, these symptoms that are noticeable and is interfering with your daily functioning in life. Right? So you can't even go to the grocery store or you can't even like go out and meet people without experiencing these symptoms, which is restlessness, tires easily, problems concentrating, irritability, irritability, muscle tensions and problems with sleep. So this isn't due to other medications, drugs, or other physical health problems. So like, it's people do experience these symptoms, and they're not really classified for a disorder. The difference is that if you actually have this, so you're always restless, you're always tired and problem concentrating, it results in you not even being able to function. So you can't even go take the public transit to I don't know your school without it interferes so severely that by the time you actually get to school, you're like already an hour late to your lecture. Because you have restlessness, you're tired, and you have problems concentrating, so you kind of like zone out all the time, and next thing you know, you're on the wrong bus or something like that. Um, irritability, you're so upset about minor things that other people dismiss or can manage that it prevents you from being able to focus or concentrate. And this isn't because of something else that's happened in your life, it's a continuing thing that you're experiencing for an extended period of time. So if you're experiencing this for a few weeks, I'd say, and you're starting to get the hang of it and you, like, you can manage it on your own, then okay, that's great, you don't actually have this disorder, but people with the disorder experience it without any actual external interference. That's the, But even if you have external interference, if you're experiencing this to that extent, then yeah, you're gonna have to go see a psychiatrist because the symptoms are still there and you it will reduce the symptoms that you're experiencing. Even though people who actually have the disorder or qualify for diagnosis are experiencing this without any actual interference. Not that blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's what JD is. Um, yeah, again, treatment is behavioral therapy and medication. But um, they said it interferes and they're overly concerned about everyday health. It's like, 
okay, my professor actually outlined it. So this person was excessively worried and it seemed like he, that person was making fun of the professor or somebody else. But they were actually personally concerned saying like, oh, professor, like, what if I have no friends and I don't have anything? And then it turns out like he apparently he was reading out the list of emails that he was getting from his students. And he said, this is why I don't send out my email anymore. <laughs> Because they keep on emailing me about this, and it's like, oh, professor, I am so worried. I think I might have these disorders. I don't know what to do. Um, I'm currently studying with my friends, but, like, I don't have any friends. That kind of stuff. Or, like, oh, I'm about to study for, like, I'm supposed to go to the exam. I don't think I can take my exam anymore because I think I'm going to fail it. Even though I haven't missed any of your lectures and I have study notes and I've been studying, but I think I'm going to fail anyway. So I don't think I should go to the exam anymore. Professor, can you extend my exam? Can you give me a... That's JD. <laughs> so that's kind of without anything else happening. They're like, oh, everything in that person's life was fine and stable, which is why they are able to go to school and have friends and all that kind of stuff, right? But because they couldn't, like... They kept on worrying about that kind of stuff. And it just seems like... It seems dismissive. If you don't actually like recognize that it is a mental disorder. So that's kind of... Uh, I don't know why they start talking about panic attacks. That's not... Anyway. Oh, sertraline I was also prescribed alongside with... Um... I don't know what trazodone was. Okay. Along with catiapine, there you go. Seroquel. Um, apparently, he, my doctor told me to be careful with Seroquel because people will steal it if they know that it's Seroquel, and they like to um give it on the street because it's an antipsychotic and it prevents psychos psychosis or psychotic symptoms. And what I was prescribed was um. Loracidone, it didn't work out very well, and there was a cinepine, which <sighs> I had to see another doctor to get that prescribed. I don't think my initial psychiatrist would have prescribed me that, but um, <laughs> oh my god, but um, what actually, what are antipsychotics for? They don't really talk. Oh, they're atypical antipsychotics, both of them. Not typical antipsychotic. I was forced to take those when I was in Korea, and they were concerned about my mental health. They thought that I was making things up or overly concerned about things I shouldn't be concerned about, which would be generalized anxiety disorder. But I wasn't. But I didn't know it was because one of the other overseeing doctors was sneakily giving me these to restart my hormones because of the amount of um, birth control pills that I was taking earlier when I was um, in my teens and early 20s that he actually said it was interfering with my hormonal whatever so he just prescribed me a bunch of these things I think it was called um, I have no idea what it was called let's see I think it was oh he did prescribe me loracidone at one point it's called Latuda he only prescribed me for a specific period of time and then he put me off of the medication and put me back on um, Seroquel prior to me getting switched to Sinopine and I stopped taking Sinopine after a while I have no idea if people were concerned because they were like are you like a crazy person why would you stop taking medication and then I did see a different psychiatrist to see if I still needed it and he recommended me take this medication called Wellbutrin. I couldn't sleep on it. I was awake. I was like, I didn't feel so good and I wanted to kind of throw up. So I didn't continue taking it. But it's called, an, it's an antidepressant. It's under a class of medication called antidepressants, SSRI. Serotonin something reuptake inhibitor. <laughs> um, anxiolytics, typically GABAs. Um, GABAs are something else. <laughs> Oh, bupropion. Um, there are the generic brand, and then there's Wellbutrin, which are more expensive. 
and they're not covered by um current like if you're on the if you're on OW or OGSP which is like um Ontario's um for the lower income or poverty stricken people they care about like these drug cards for people like that so that they can afford their medication or they can get medication that they need well butrin isn't actually covered by that and it's not covered by OHIP or um the Trillium drug benefit program so it's actually a separate brand that you have to purchase but it was kind of expensive i think he managed to give me this um i think it was a trial prescription so he says if you take this to your psych um pharmacist they will be able to give you the prescription without a cost but it was only for like a month at a time so i was like Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, it's an antidepressant. I couldn't, like, I took it for, like, one day, and I was like, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> I was like, I can't literally, like, sleep anymore. Like, everything's just bothering me or something. It's just weird. But, um, I think they gave me Risperidone, Risperdal, when I was at the, amongst others, but it was mostly Risperidone with some other anxiolytics. I think it was Ativan and Risperidone. I mean Risperidol. So they gave me Ativan and Risperidol and some other stuff. And it was to genuinely restart all of that hormonal deficiencies, which I was really concerned about because I was like, that affects my hormones? Then why the hell are people taking it? And they're like, it's... Honestly, I actually don't suffer from such a severe mental condition such as schizophrenia where you would ra it's you can't even function if you can't if you're not on those medications as a couple of it is, right? So that's kind of why people take it even though there's no other like currently with the medical advancement that's kind of where they're at. They're like, yes, we made this and it will prevent you from experiencing these symptoms. Now you can do other things, but it does have side effects. Which is why a lot of people kind of like do a pro and con should it be on medication and I, I should like just I think if it's really bad to the point where you had to see a psychiatrist and they're actually saying you were prescribing you this medication, I think you should be um taking the medication. That's what I think. But again, you might it's a personal choice, it does affect your body. So again, if you don't really want to go down that route and you wanna see if therapy is working out prior to even taking medication, I'd say you can do that too. Oh, antipsychotics are also tr used to treat mood disorders such as anxiety, depression, and bipolar disorder. So um, there are these class of medication called mood stabilizers, which my psychiatrist specifically stayed away from. And so like none of the psychiatrists that I saw ever recommended me a mood stabilizer. In fact, they wasn't even discussing that with me. They usually prescribe me either antidepressants or antipsychotics instead of going through mood stabilizer. One of the most popular mood stabilizers is called lithium, and it's for severe cases of bipolar disorder. But typically, antipsychotics is enough, for enough to treat most mood disorders. And the reason why, I don't really know why people don't like prescribing these mood stabilizers, but apparently these side effects are very, very, very heavy. <laughs> Like, it's very noticeable when you're on mood stabilizer, the side effects are really bad. But, oh yeah, and also they prescribed me a repeat called Abilify, which is apparently a hard drug to be prescribed. A lot of people are looking for prescriptions for it. Which I was like, why would you want to be on Abilify? <laughs> it's a little weird. Um... Do people steal medications? Yes, they do. Why? I don't know. <laughs> These aren't really for jokes or drugs or recreational use, but they, people still use it for recreational and drug use anyway. Um, I read on a website that um, some people actually like to use those as like roofie or date rape drugs, like Rohypnol and stuff. But no. 
we'll do that. Um, um yeah, it can interfere with your therapy actually because it's actually reworking your neuronal signals or preventing you from actually um, responding that way, right? It's specifically because of the fact that um. How would I say this? Um, SSRIs, which is a serotonin um, uptake, reuptake inhibitor. So, like, how that works is serotonin is in a capsule in your brain. Those are neurotransmitters. When they get released, um, there's some because each neuron, neuronal signal, like each neuron, has these long line of thing, and then the, at the end it's called dendrites, and then it meets with the other dendrites, and then it goes to the neuron, which is like at the center of it. There's a space. There's a gap between. Um, each neuron cell, neuron cell, unlike your muscles and your um, bones and stuff, there's nothing connecting it. But because it's magnetized or polarized, right, it's electrical, right, it it gets automatically attracted to the other end. So it goes like that. And then, but there are some like neurotransmitters like floating around in the gap. And then in that gap, it goes right like. It goes like, um, how do I say this? Um, it's supposed to go back into the previous neuron. So that triggers another neuronal response. But when that is, like when you're responding abnormally and there's too much of it, the, the drugs, the inhibitor reuptakes, reuptake inhibitors rather, um, they prevent that from getting absorbed back into your dendrites because when it gets absorbed back into your dendrites, um, there's a breakdown process where your neurons are no longer firing, so it's just like, it goes only one way, okay, whereas most of the time it will go back and forth, right? So while it's breaking it down, it would be kind of like cut off from the rest of it, but what that's really doing is, um, it stops it from that happening, so like, you don't end up with some sort of, like, But it's like, um, sorry, I was thinking about something else. Um, yeah, that's what happens um, when you have like depressive symptoms. Um, okay, so why do people like to take psychotropic drugs? They don't like to take it, I have to be honest. No, but like a lot of people are resistant to taking it. Um... Classes of psychotropic drugs. Oh, right, that was my whole point of this video. Okay, so what what is the different classes of psychotropic drugs? Anxiolytics, antidepressants, antipsychotics, and mood stabilizers. Those are the four main categories of. Oh, it, apparently there's stimulants too, but no. Basically, if you go to a psychiatrist, those are the four main things out of the categories available they will prescribe to you most of the time unless you are like um okay so what Okay, hold on. I don't know. There's no list of psycho psychotropic drugs. These are. That's not the right. <laughs> not saying it right. <laughs> okay, so um, let me just Google JBA. Maybe that would be. Oh yeah. Um. What do antipsychotics do? What do anxiolytics do? Like I said, anxiolytics are used to try treat anxiety symptoms. So it's supposed to like reduce your restlessness and um and 
gamma amino butyric acid. Okay, it's sedative effect. The effect is like a sedative. A sedative being like when you go to your dentist and they give you like the numbing agent, you know, and they put you kind of under with anesthesia so you're kind of like just calm and you don't really feel much pain while they do their surgery. So that's what that's for. But with unlike that, where it's like literally someone's going to cut you open and it's going to be a legitimate sedative, the sedative effect is that you are no longer responding as if things are, are triggering you kind of thing. That's what that is. Um. <laughs> Sorry. The way they look at they even present it on Google is kind of funny. Um, what's an antipsychotic? Um, okay, let's look at one of the. I don't really like. Yeah, so they do use it for mood disorders such as bipolar disorder, anxiety, and whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> um, maybe this website has some good... Um... Olanzapine is one of the more commonly prescribed ones for schizophrenia, um, as well as Haldol and uh, Asinapine, which was what I was prescribed. But Asinapine is for maintenance. So when you are severely, like if you just first start experiencing full-blown symptoms of schizophrenia and you're diagnosed with that disorder, they wouldn't be prescribing a cinnabine. And that, because it's in a typical antipsychotic, it can be used for other things such as anxiety disorders or depression. So it's, it's a mood stable. They can be used as a mood stabilizer and a maintenance agent. It's not necessarily for like full-blown out symptoms of mental illness. That kind of stuff. Um, wait. I think some people do prescribe it if it's not severe, but schizophrenia in and of itself is a severe mental disorder, so maybe it's just. But typically, it's um they will prescribe you um olanzapine or um Haldol or um like I said risperidone. That kind of stuff would be for severe um, cases, and clozapine, yeah, let's not forget about clozapine, <laughs> um, I actually don't know how they make this, this is like a trade secret with pharmaceutical agencies and stuff, I think. No, you're not supposed to be on any of these drugs if you're pregnant. Like, the doctor will take you off of the medication. They will not prescribe you any more of those drugs if you ever were pregnant. Or is pregnant. In fact, they're very, very, like... They won't even prescribe it to you if you're lactating and you're breastfeeding your baby. Like, after that is when they'll start getting you back on the medication. But during the time that you're pregnant, so the moment that they realize or they have um, your pregnancy results to the time that you are finished breastfeeding is but that chunk of time is when they're not going to prescribe you any medication so um it does affect the baby i want to be very clear on this <laughs> these drugs will negatively affect your fetus so this is why they're like because it's such a strong class of medications and even if your body is able, like, capable of breaking it down, again, it's affecting your neurons and your central nervous system. It's going to affect the baby's central nervous system, which is just being developed, won't have the ability to break down these... Um, they don't have the enzymes yet to break down all these, like, leftover waste and stuff like that. 
Um. There's not a lot of information on it. <laughs> uh, what is maybe there's what are antipsychotic based? I would thought that it would not take this long. Uh, not necessarily. Oh, they're used to manage symptoms of psychosis. Again, these are all for symptoms of disorders. It doesn't treat the disorder in and of itself. Apart from antidepressants, if you're depressed and you're taking antidepressants, after a while, your depression should be get better on its own. It's not really on its own, but... You should be able to... Excuse me. Uh, no longer be qualified for diagnosis for depression after you take the treatment, medical treatment for depression, which can or cannot, in does not have to include therapy. Um, uh, yes, yeah, schizoaffective disorder or known as personality disorders. Um, there's... People do have severe side effects, such as tardive dyskinesia, um, weight gain, there is um, digestive problems, and all that kind of stuff. And, like, you can develop tics from it. Like, you know, like, kind of twitching and stuff like that. Because it's such a strong class of medications affecting your central nervous system. Sometimes it causes your neurons to fire on and off, like, blah. Honestly, the only time I took these medications regularly was when I was in a hospital. That's it. But when I was out of the hospital, I didn't take it regularly because I think that was what the nurses were trying to tell me. But again, the doctors, like, they can't really tell the patients just to see how it goes because they won't be able to tell because they're mentally ill. So this is why they kind of prescribe it as take it once a day kind of thing until we can assess you. But Again, if you're in the hospital, you're only there if it's a really severe situation. Not when you are capable of taking medications on your own. And they know how you are responding to said medication. So if that's what's happening, it should be fine. I didn't know that it affected um, the hippocampus, which is responsible for um, hormone regulations, which has a lot to do with... Um, hunger control and stuff like that, which is what causes weight gain, right? So that's why. Um. So what are antipsychotics, medical uses? Does that really? Um, okay, so you kind of have to work with your doctor on this one. With, um, if you're being prescribed antipsychotics, unfortunately, I know you don't have any educational background and all that kind of stuff, but I recommend you just being very honest about what's going on in your life. If you can tell him word for word what is going on in your life and you're not making any of it up, you're not trying to cover up for anyone, this is what you're going through. If you're telling your doctor this, then they can adjust the medication accordingly and they'll have a better idea or understanding of how to treat you. If you leave anything out, if you're not telling your doctor anything or you're saying it in a way that's not exactly what that is, they're not going to know how to treat you because they don't know what is a variable that's going on with you, that's causing you to feel or respond in that way, or why it is that you're responding that way, is it the medication or is it something else, right? 
because there could be people in your environment that could be resp responding to you differently because you're seeking a psychiatrist and you're on medication. So they kind of need to know, like, what is it, like, what's the issue currently. Um, the stuff agents. Um, why don't I just go through what psychosis is? That's kind of what psychotic symptoms, these drugs are to combat these psychotic symptoms. Um, the thing with antipsychotics is because it causes you to, like, you know, eat excessively due to the effect on your hippocampus, it might mess up with your sleeping patterns and all that kind of stuff can lead to um, you feeling a little moody. That's it. But that's kind of... They do prescribe other things if that's what the problem is. Like if you're... If they're not willing to prescribe mood stabilizers to you and they don't know if you're already suffering from a mood disorder, then it's kind of they're gonna f supplement it with different medications so that you are not... Okay, so signs and... So it's like... Kind of like, uh, yeah. So you, they know that you have the blah, 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 and this is what you've been treated for, blah, 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 blah. So they're like, we're not willing to put you on mood stabilizers, but we will put you on these things to maintain those or manage the symptoms and then give you something to combat your actual mood disorder. So that's kind of what they were doing with me specifically but um okay so this is apart from anything else interfering with your well-being such as you're eating properly you're sleeping um you're not constantly exposed to new environment and you stimuli um nothing is wrong in your environment you're not experiencing sort of negative feedback from other people you're not getting yourself or other people damaged you're not like experiencing sexual assault or anything like that Aside from those things, <laughs> um, psychosis is kind of, they don't actually have the diagnosis. I, so it's an ongoing medical joke where like the patient is like lying or covering up for what's actually affecting them and that happens quite frequently like you'd be surprised but it's, it's something you can't really hide if you're actually going in for surgery right so it's like oh why are you experiencing these symptoms like why aren't it's kind of a headache right before you treat them it's like okay you're still experiencing these symptoms we already treated you for this what's going on <laughs> okay so psychosis is um, delusional beliefs and hallucinations. Um, no psychosis. <laughs> um, uh, incoherent speech. Um, there is sleep problems, social withdrawal, lack of motivations, and difficulties carrying out daily activities. <laughs> Um, some people like to combat these psychotic symptoms with recreational drugs, which isn't what they're used for. Recreational drugs are for fun. We, <laughs> Whereas um, these prescription medications are for, um, I have problems. If you're using prescription medications for fun, you have, you're going to get problems. If you're using... Um, recreational drugs to supplement or prevent yourself from being on medication that's for problems you're gonna get worse i don't it feels like you're not actually getting worse but you're actively getting worse you're getting in the way of your own treatment okay 
that's what that is okay don't i don't know why people still stigmatize with this mental health stuff all the time it's literally no one thinks less of you because you have a mental health disorder like okay you have like oh i'm sorry i am blah 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 currently i'm in treatment but it's like no one's gonna ask somebody about their mental health or physical condition it's kind of like it's not really a conversational topic and if somebody like is your friend or is interested in being acquainted with you they wouldn't really ask about that kind of stuff even though sometimes they might be able to recognize it and it might be obvious but they won't ask too much about it so um the commonly seen problem with psychosis i think is hallucinations so auditory visual hallucinations are apparent they respond like it's called um They consist of simple sensations or more detailed experiences. Um, general characters are being vivid and uncontrollable. So these are no external influence or stimuli. So they're not thinking about anything. They're not experiencing. Like there's no actual feedback from their external environment, right? There's nobody yelling at them. There's nobody like, there's no, f it's not like a, or it's like, a reverb of like flashing lights or anything like that. There's nothing like that happening. No one's harassing them. No one's stalking them. Um, there's there. It's not like um, what do you call it? Like, it's not auras where you get like those things right before you get a huge pounding headache. And it's not um. Like it's called synesthesia, I think, when people can see colors associated with sound and tone. So that's completely separate from that there's nothing going on it's like it's a completely silent silent room no one's really saying anything there's no external stimuli nothing's causing them to do that but they're seeing things including people that aren't there so to them like they hear things people talking to them and it's not there right and it's kind of obvious when somebody's like breaking out and they're like um I don't know how to say this. So if there's a person and then like this person's just like, oh, like insulting you and like trying to like make you feel bad. And you never met this person before. It's because they're going through hallucinations. Right? It's like their hallucinations are them actually legitimately hearing a voice and that voice is attached to a figure that they can see. But nobody's there. <laughs> Literally, it's quite distressing for people to experience this which is why they get kind of they know that it's not so i'm gonna say everyone who has this kind of hallucinations know that there's nothing there they know no one's there they know no one's actually talking but they know that they can hear it and it's not normal so that's kind of why they don't want to even see other people and they don't want to like blah 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 um And the delusional beliefs is like, um, you know, delusions of grandeur, delusions of like the perfect maid, and blah 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 blah. So this guy, like, this guy is so perfect, or like, oh, I only like, I'm entitled to like a million dollars, even though I didn't do anything to earn it. I should be receiving compensation for the fact that I'm alive. And them saying mean things to me is hurtful, so they should pay me because they said something mean, even though they didn't say anything mean. That's the delusional part. If somebody did say something mean, and you feel like they should compensate you, such as, you need to apologize because that was not okay. Right? That wouldn't be a delusional belief. But if that person didn't say anything mean, and it was completely fine and socially appropriate for them to say... And you believe that they didn't say anything, and to you it's like that, then that's called delusions.
Oh, another common type is persecutory delusion. When a person believes that some entity is attempting to harm them. Even though no one's actually hurt them in the past and no one's hurting them. If somebody has hurt them in the past and they think somebody else is out to get them even though they haven't done anything and they've already like, you know, resolved issues with that kind of stuff, it's called PTSD. So that's a very core trait of PTSD. If you're experiencing PTSD, please go see somebody about PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, delusions of reference is typically seen with a lot of stalkers where they think that like something that's completely meaningless and doesn't is not for them is like um, an act by or message from some other entity. Or delusions of grandeur, the belief that um, oh my god, I just realized. <laughs> The belief that one possesses special power or influence beyond one's actual limits. So they think they're entitled and they think that they're great when they're not actually. And thought broadcasting, the belief that one's thoughts are audible. And thought insertion, that like, oh, you, what you're thinking is not your own thoughts. Somebody else is inputting their thoughts and their whatever into my brain and that's what I'm thinking. Not reading what somebody else is saying. Like, you know, through body language and, like, the way that they speak to you and stuff like that. That is not thought insertion. That's called you reading. <laughs> you are reading the situation. You're reading the environment. You're reading what the person is saying to you. Not just... Like, you know that um, picture that people always have with the iceberg? And they're like, this is a subconscious and this is, like, your conscious beliefs. It's actually incorrect. The top part is called written communication. So this is what's written. And then the deep part is what's actually being said. Right? So the, the what's actually written is like very tip of the iceberg. It's very visible. But you don't know. Like it, what the meaning behind of it is so much deeper than that. Because it has a lot to do with the person who wrote it. Um, things that are going on in the environment and how it's being written and what that means and the connotations and implication of said things. So that part is what they mean. So if that's what you're reading, it's what you're starting to understand, that's not called thought insertion. A lot of people start feeling insecure thinking that that's what they're going through. Right? They're like, oh my god, what if I have delusional beliefs? And there's some people who are out there just plain nasty, mean, awful people who actually like try to convince other people that they are actually going through delusional beliefs or whatever especially if you work for an abusive boss where they're like oh you just think you're so special and you deserve all these things and you just don't you're a crazy person even though like you're like asking them okay you need to like give me like at least two allocated breaks which is mandated by the government for employing people for business <laughs> Right? And they're like, no, you think you're so special and like you're crazy, man. You're just like a crazy person. You think I have to pay you on time? Well, you think you deserve all this? I can get anybody to work for me. Ah. It's actually your boss that's crazy if he's saying that or she's saying that. Not you. But it sounds like it's like they're trying to make it seem like it's you because they feel like, honestly, the, why, the reason why they're responding that way is because they're behaving in a socially unacceptable way and they're kind of embarrassed or ashamed about what they did. So that's how they're responding to you. Your boss is being an asshole. That's called being an asshole. Not necessarily a mental disorder. It seems like that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like there's something wrong with that person, but... I mean, you, you might be just really stressed out. Or she might be really stressed out. And maybe they're just like having problems at home or something and they just aren't really super aware because they don't sleep enough. Or like they're on like five cups of coffee a day and they're like, fuck, I don't know about that, blah, 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 blah. and they're just so focused on making sure that all the supplies are getting out and stuff like that. Like, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. But, um. Catatonia is actually a symptom of schizophrenia. And it's like, it's like that person's a stone. 
like they don't experience like anything their expressions there's no expression on their face not in their tone of voice not in their face special expression not in their body language nothing like that it's completely catatonic right called catatonia um i think it's a greek based word it just means that they're not really responding um to any stimuli even though they should be responding That's the problem. You should be feeling or responding in said ways. But if you're not, that means you're catatonic. That's abnormal. I know some people are like, yeah, I don't want to be emotional. I don't want to show my emotions. It's fine. You're supposed to have emotions. You're not supposed to like... If something bad happened to you, it'd be weird if you weren't upset and you weren't feeling something. If you don't feel any sort of way, you're not responding normally to these emotional things... Even if you know that that's how people respond in those situations, and there's something wrong with you. Sorry, it's called catatonia or whatever. Um, anhedonia, on the other, other hand, is the complete inability to feel pleasure and joy. Nothing makes them happy. Everything is just so depressing and sad, and they're like... <sighs> and also, please don't confuse this with empathy. So you can feel what the other person is feeling based on... They think you have to agree with them. It's, that's called sympathizing with somebody. Empathizing with somebody means that based on their behavior, they're expressing how they feel, and you can feel that. Like, oh, I feel your pain. Like, or like, you know, because you've experienced similar pains before and you've been in that situation, you're like, oh, I know what that feels like. Oh, that sucks. That, like, you know, like, when you watch a video and, like, you see somebody get, like, a scraped knee, you're just like... I scraped my knee before, that freaking hurt. Or like, you get kind of flashbacks from, oh my god, that time that I stubbed my toe. Oh, that guy stubbed his toe. Oh my god. Yeah. Sometimes like you see something really creepy and you don't even know what it is, but like it creeps you out. That's called empathy. But, <laughs> um, come on, you need to be able to, like, admit that you can feel what other people are feeling. It's very pro-social. It helps you make friends and acquaintances. And neighbors. Meet neighbors and, like, get to know other people. Just don't close yourself off to other people in life. You know? Just don't do that. But that's what that is. I have to go clean up the kitchen later. It's a daunting task, and I'm taking multiple breaks before I even, like, try to go and, like, you know. <laughs> I was wondering, like, I made a comment, and I don't know if that upset other people. Hmm. I guess they learned how to speak in a different way. I was like, ugh, kind of annoying, but whatever. Um, you're talking shit. If you don't know what that is, talking shit is like when you don't like somebody and you're like, ugh, that guy's a fucking monkey. That's called talking shit. You know, like that guy's not really a monkey, but you just don't like that guy. So like, it's, that's how you're letting people know. I don't like that guy. It's insulting. <laughs> um, what else is talking shit? It's like when you're try you're being sarcastic, but like in an insulting way. That's called talking shit. People who go to bars a lot, they talk a lot of shit. Oh, is that why they're calling it a bathroom? Because everyone's just talking shit? Oh my god. Um, Talking shit's like, oh, you know, like when you're like, um, 
when you're talking about somebody else but you're saying it's the other person they're like yeah she's a bitch and i fucking hate her but she's not like the person you're talking about isn't actually a bitch but you just don't like her and she did something wrong but you're like i don't care about her she's a bitch I fucking hate her oh my god it's only talking shit if they actually did something bad to you if they didn't then you're just being a crazy person that's the difference I was kind of concerned actually, I was like wondering if they're gonna steal from me or whatever. Um, it has nothing to do with the amount of money that people have, I've noticed. Like people who steal will steal regardless of how much wealth they actually personally have. But it's because I don't know these people and I think they're like... The way that they said it is how other people have said it before they stole something from me. Which is what was concerning me. Which is, I think, something that other people have tried to mention, but I think they're talking shit. And it's like, oh, gee, thanks. For that. But yeah, um... Hmm. Huh. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, personally, the things that they were prescribing me and the medications that they were prescribing me. Well, Beatrice and Sertraline, the class of, under the class of antidepressants, that's what they prescribed me. Um, antipsychotics was Sertraline, Asinipine, not the Sertraline, sorry. Um, it was Seroquel, Asinipine, and it's called Saphirus. So the brand name was Saphirus, and the Seroquel, it was like Tiopine and um, some other stuff. And I was prescribed a lot of clonazepam, which most of it I didn't even get to take because people kept on stealing it from me. I'm like, Gee, thanks. Thanks for nothing. But um, it would have been fine for me, that's the thing. The fact that they stole it, decided to poison themselves with it, was did nothing to do with me. <laughs> but that's what they did. Why would you do that? It's fucking weird, man. Fucking weird. Ow. Um, don't be ashamed to be on medication. These medications, antipsychotics, will be prescribed to a dumb number of disorders. Including mood disorders, including schizophrenia, including um, anxiety disorders, including um, personality disorders, and eating disorders, perhaps. You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, um, <sighs> trying to find out what that person's diagnosis is, and I was like... Based on his responses and the things that he's saying, It's a little weird. This is another person who I saw was like this. Um, this guy had um bipolar disorder, and I think no, he didn't have bipolar disorder. He had depressor depression from, but the cause of it was because he wasn't living in his home country. Because he wasn't meeting anybody from his home country, he wasn't friends with anybody from his home country, and the people that he did meet who was from his own country, lived here for so long that they were pretty much Americanized. They were very, very, like, American, not very much, like, from his home country, and he missed living back home because the food was different, um, the language is different, and the people's expressions were different, right? But he, 
I guess it was, I don't think he was refusing to assimilate, but that's just kind of, he was so from that country that even if he left for a long period of time, he would, I don't, I guess that's why he was experiencing those feelings of depression. I don't think it was a good idea for him to stay that long. I think he should have gone back at one point, but I don't know if that's the reason why he continues to experience those symptoms, but that's what the doctor was trying to say. But yeah, um, uh, he had depression, but they were treating him for bipolar disorder. So the medications that he was being prescribed was for bipolar disorder, but he had depression. And same thing with the other guy, he has bipolar disorder, but they're treating him for schizophrenia. Which I find was odd. I was wondering if it's because um, he couldn't afford the medication for mood stabilizers. And if the mood stabilizers... If the mood stabilizers would have been resulted in him having to take other medications, other classes of medications, such, such as mm -hmm. antidepressants. With mood stabilizers, you can't really take any other medication. That's a problem. So if you are to take anything else while you're on mood stabilizers, it might even interfere with the mood stabilizing agent. So you might be like... I don't know, like, you, you would be on one mood stabilizer medication taken at a recommended dosage for a significant period of time until your treatment was proven to be, um, effective. But that means you're not on antidepressants, you're not on any other class of medication, you're not on antipsychotics, you're not on, um, anxiolytics, nothing like that. You can't take any other drugs, you can't be on caffeine, you can't be on, um, can't smoke, you can't do anything on it, you can't get pregnant, you shouldn't even be having sex because you're not mentally stable enough to be engaging. Oh, that's probably why he didn't do that because he said I was, okay. It wasn't interfering with my interpersonal skills or like my ability to maintain a relationship and how people were responding to me. A lot of them actually did have mental disorders, but they weren't, it wasn't enough for them to like, not be able to maintain a relationship or social life, right? It wasn't that bad. I mean, they've seen some pretty nasty cases, but yeah, that's probably why they didn't put me on mood stabilizers. He should be on mood stabilizers. I don't know why they're not putting him on mood stabilizers. I'm trying to think of reasons why. Maybe he needs... Why isn't he... I think they think he's faking some of his symptoms. Or like... They're expecting him to gradually get out of it as he gets older. I don't know. <laughs> they don't know why, what's actually called. He's not saying the right thing, isn't he? He's not being honest with his psychiatrist. That's what that is. So even if they were to put him on that, they wouldn't know how long to put him on that for and the correct dosage for it. Oh my god. That's what that was. Yeah. Um, I really wouldn't recommend you lying to your doctor, okay? Like, even if the police get involved and you're under investigation or something, like, it's not really worth risking your health for, I think, personally, but yeah. Um, oh, and also, commonly prescribed medications if you have any sort of personality disorder is antidepressants. That's typically like the one, all in one go to stop for any sort of whatever antidepressants. Um, they do dis prescribe um, anxiolytics to personality disorders. Um, sometimes they prescribe um, 
definitely antipsychotics for certain personality disorders more so than others, but it would be either between antidepressants and antipsychotics if you have both of them combined prescribed to you. I don't think you have a personality disorder. Yeah, that's not really what that the, that wouldn't really help. Um, so it would be either antidepressants or antipsychotics, and sometimes they might even prescribe anxiolytics. But due to the fact that personality disorder people are prone or have comorbidity with drug addiction, they may not actually prescribe those things to you because you're highly addictive. Like physically dependent, you get become physically dependent on benzodiazepines, which is why you should always read the warning label. <laughs> but that's what that is. Um, antipsychotics not addictive. Um, antidepressants again not addictive. Um, what's like antidepressants, antipsychotic anxiolytics, and what else was it? Mood stabilizers. Mood stabilizers, again, not really addictive. But if you're having a hard time getting prescription for medications that you think you need, I would honestly say regardless of whatever doctor you have and what you think he is saying and whatever, they won't actually, like, they're not going to give you medications to make you worse. Like, that's all you have to trust is that at the end of the day, it's not going to make you worse. It might not actually make you better, but at least you're not getting worse. That's called maintenance. <laughs> That's what you are looking for when you're trying to treat psychiatric symptoms with patients that you don't even know if they're telling you the truth or not. So, um, yeah. Um, what is... Do people lie to their doctors all the time? All the freaking time. <laughs> I think that's like one of the biggest complaints about doctors or people who practice a lot, uh, where they're like, um, oh, my patients lie to me all the freaking time and I'm fucking sick of it. And it's like, oh, really? Tell me more. <laughs> anyway, 